Hi my friend, in this video we're going to be making underground tech house drums inspired by Mal P's song, Beats for the Underground. And we're going to find out if we can do this in under 30 minutes using the 80-20 rule of tech house drums. And what you're listening to right now is the track that we'll be working on. And what you're looking at right now is the Ableton Project file that we'll be working on. In particular, we're going to work on this drum group right here. And we're going to be individually soloing each track in the order that I created it so that you can kind of follow along in your own drum creation workflow. All in all, these drums did take me about 20 to 30 minutes to recreate because I was doing it against a reference track. And this entire song, if we zoom out, as you can see here, it's been mixed, mastered, arranged, and it's ready to go. And it took me about five hours to complete over the course of about five days. And if you want help finishing songs faster, just like this, uh, I have made you a free bundle of templates, samples, and special bonuses that I use to completely finish one new song like this every single week. Just visit the link that's in the description to grab the ultimate song finishing toolkit for free. And with that said, let's get into this. All right, all right, all right. So the first thing we're gonna do is work on the kick drum. So this is what it sounds like. And the pattern here is just classic four and four. So one, two, three, four, nothing too crazy. So we'll move on to the sound design where things get a little bit more interesting. So what I've done here is I went to this actual reference track. So I have Malpy's Beats of the Underground track in my Ableton project file. And what I did was looking around the intro or the outro of the track, found an area where the, the kick was more or less isolated. So not a lot of bass playing or other melodic instruments that you can kind of isolate it out. So if you're doing this, you're gonna to wanna to look for extended mixes usually. So we'll have the intro and outro and make sure that there's no like kind of high pass filter or low pass filter, or anything weird going on with the kick drum uh, when you're isolating it, which is nice to have the extended mix so you can look at the beginning and end. Um, what I've done next is just dropped it into this Ableton um, simpler device. You can see it right here. And I set up a bunch of macros to make things a little easier and quicker. So the, um, the filter envelope is already set to max here. And then I just drag down the filter frequency. If you hear how it originally sounded, a lot of like hi-hats and some kind of like ringing. And then I just drag this down to where it kind of sounded good to me. Other than that, I did drag up the velocity to volume a little bit. I think default it's around like 25% or so. Just kind of makes the, the sound kind of hitting hit a little bit harder, I'm finding. And then I added a little bit of one knob saturation to kind of fill up the sound a bit. And then I dial back the output a little bit as well. I did adjust the decay, sustain, and release a little to kind of tighten up the sound. Um, and then also adjusted the high shelf which is over here, just kind of rolling off a little bit of the high end, but not using um, like a hard uh, low pass filter, which is a little bit more subtle and a little bit more natural sounding. If you want like any of these kind of like little little racks and presets and samples, uh, there'll be a link in the description where you can grab the project files for this video and all the project files that I've done in the past and I'll be dropping on a weekly basis. You can extract anything, all these kind of things. Other than that, the main thing is like I mentioned in a few videos before, the main things are to use a reference track so that you can get, select the right sounds, sort of select the right volumes, uh, and that's really going to kind of get you get you that 80-20% of the way there. So what I have here is that now P song set up on a reference track here. I turned it off, but I set the S key to be able to flick between it. So that is flick between. Kind of on time, if you can, to get an idea of the right sound selection and getting the volumes right. Those are going to really be the main keys there. So once that was done, let's see if I added anything else to this. It should all be, that's pretty much it. But it's everything is built up into this Ableton rack right here. So that's basically that. And then next up, I did the open hi-hat, which sounds like this. And so we take a look at the uh, MIDI, the pattern here. It's just the, that kind of offbeat classic sound. And there are three layers that I have going on here. So the first one that I did was this layer right here. So let me just turn everything off slowly. And so what, again, the idea was to flick back and forth between the reference track and mine. Try to find the right sound and get the volume done in the right way. Uh, I've had a kind of a hard time setting it up, so, so this was like the first sound that I kind of got got somewhere there. Then what I did was add it in this layer here. And so if we take a look, this is right here. 
it's a similar kind of idea. So if I zoom in, what I did was I found a section of the song, and I think it was the intro where the hi-hat was playing in the Mal P song, extracted it, dropped it into here, played with the filter envelope a little bit, uh, and then added in a bit of uh, saturation to kind of fill up the sound, played with the decay, sustain, and release to kind of tighten it up a little bit, um, and then dropped a little bit of the high shell just to... Uh, no, I didn't do that. I just rolled off a bunch of the lows, and then I used one of this one knob sash, uh, one knob set transient designer to tuck in the sustain a little bit. So again, tightening up the sound a bit. Actually, no, this is going over the entire hi hat rack. So let me come back to that in a moment. But when I was listening to this, if uh, we listen back and forth, I'll flip back and forth like how I was actually doing it. I was kind of hearing this like high end that my hi hats weren't really hitting, so I added this additional track. Let me let me show you what that sounds like. And so what this was, if we go over to here, I just found another hi hat sound. I uh, dialed in the start time to make it a little bit tighter. Uh, I dropped the frequency down a little bit, but this was actually low pass or high pass just kind of getting rid of a bunch of the low end so I'm mostly just trying to add some high end with this this track here i added the transposition up just a little bit um to kind of make get that kind of high end kind of sound and then uh dialed in that fade out so there's a little bit more i guess smooth so we listen back and forth a little bit closer then in terms of processing on the rest of the open hi-hats what i've done is remove a ton of the lows to kind of just keep that nice hi-hat hi open uh, hi-hat sound kind of keep that high end preserved then i ran it into a list one knob transient designer tucked in the sustain a little to tighten up all of the hi-hats a little bit it's a little bit tighter sounding oh, wrong track and then i have this one knob saturation applying to all of them kind of gluing these together a little bit and adding in a bit of fullness and again this is these are more of these kind of one knob racks that are available in the project files and linked in the description and if you want me to make a video on how i made these two i'd be happy to do that as well so the next thing that i added in was these hi-hats this is a look at the pattern usually when i'm doing this uh, i believe i started with this the layer that's highlighted right here um, kind of copying that open hi-hat pattern and then slowly over time adding in some extra hi-hat sounds to kind of add that groove and that shuffle and then usually doing something where I'll usually work in the first bar or the first two bars to create the initial kind of groove or loop then I'll duplicate it over and make some slight adjustments so there's like a little bit of a call and response kind of happening so the idea here again was flipping back and forth between this and the reference track to get the right sounds and to pick the right volumes and to kind of try to get the right pattern there as well. In terms of the processing, I uh, got rid of a bunch of the lows and high shelves out a little bit of the top to kind of mix it in a little bit. And I used the one knob transient designer to reduce the attack a bit to again kind of smoothen things out a little bit and then also reduce the sustain a bit to kind of tighten up the sound. And then just a little bit of one knob saturation using Ableton Saturator to fill out the sound a little bit more and add some kind of grit and character. The next thing I added in was this clap. So let me open that up and play it. So this is a look at the MIDI. It's kind of standard where you'd expect things to go. Uh, it's happening on the two and the four, two and the four. And again, main thing was choosing the sounds and flicking back and forth between the reference track to try to find the right sounds, make sure the pattern was in the right places and to make sure the volumes are correct. So let's go ahead and do that. That's kind of the idea there. In terms of the sounds here, what I did do is if I dig into the simpler, I have one panned a little bit to the left, as you can see here, and then the other one here, if you move from sample to controls, you can see that I have one panned a little bit to the right, so it's kind of creating a width kind of effect. And then also if you look, the volume here is negative 11 on the one on the right, and the one on the left is negative 12, so again, it's kind of balancing out while flipping back and forth like this. To get the right sound and make sure the volume is correct. Then for both of the claps, it's running into this kind of standard channel strip that I always have going on, removing a bunch of the lows, uh, tightening up the sustain a little bit, shorting everything, tightening things up, and then a little bit of one-up saturation to uh, fill up the sound a little bit. 
Next thing that I added was the snare, so let's go ahead and have a listen to that. Bring up the volume so you can hear it nice. So having a look at the pattern here, what I started with was this one snare here that's just kind of reinforcing the clap. So it's happening on the two and the four and the two and the four. And then what I did was slowly kind of listening back and forth between this and the reference track, added these little flourishes, kind of that cool shuffle, jack in kind of sound. So let's go ahead and flip back and forth between this and the reference track. So pretty subtle stuff. Um, and that's kind of what I landed on there. Uh, again, kind of trying to go for a call and response kind of idea here. So um, first bar is slightly different than the second bar. So there's a little bit of that cool call and response, which is really important to house music and kind of keeps things interesting and dynamic. In terms of the any kind of other processing on here, um, what we have is the standard channel strip, but in this case, we're just removing some of the lows at 261 hertz to just kind of um, make sure that it's not taking up too much of the low end, um, keep that the low end nice and safe for the kick and the sub and all that kind of stuff. So once these initial uh, kind of sounds are done, um, I guess the next thing I did add was this palm. Bring up the volume and let me listen to it. So this, if we listen back to the reference track. I feel like it's slightly in there. I went for a little bit more pronounced sound. Again, this is the idea is, like I mentioned in previous videos, is to start with a reference track to kind of build it up and follow the volumes and the sound selection to get that professional sound, but then just start taking things in a new direction at a certain point to kind of make it unique and your own. So what I did was just feel like I heard this in the tune um, and I just found it, like I looked up Brave Tom I believe is what I looked up and just kind of ended up on this pattern here um, and then nestled it in with the volume automation jumping back and forth between the macro tune and then in terms of any other processing uh, using this channel strip once again removing some of the lows but bringing it back a little bit further uh, at 130 hertz instead of usually it's around 200 hertz so there's a little bit more of that low end of the tom coming through and then just um, hard to uh, a little bit of one knob saturation to fill up the sound a little bit. Then usually what I'll do is add in a couple of different tops layers to kind of add some groove and some character. And so let's start off with the first one that I added, which was these shakers. And so this, if we listen back to reference track, I feel like there's kind of maybe a 16th hat or some kind of shaker, and that's kind of the idea that I was going for here. So let's have a listen to the reference. And then ours. So a lot more subtle, I would say, and um, kind of mixed in a little bit. I just flicked up some kind of shaker on splice. And then in terms of any sound processing, rolling off a bunch of the loads, but I think it was already rolled off in the sample anyways. And we have the one knob side chain, so I don't have to map it to a compressor and a kick and all that kind of stuff. It's just built in on one knob there to kind of add that groove and that pumping sound. And then this one knob with a uh, plugin as well, which is a free plugin, but I just mapped it to macros to make things easier. We're just kind of making more of a stereo sound for the shakers, pushing them to the left and right, uh, making room in the middle for all the other important stuff. Next up is this next tops line that I added. So this is mixed in quite a bit, and I did have to go into this one, or what I looked up was just drum uh, breaks on splice. I did have to go in and kind of uh, drop uh, warp markers and kind of tighten up the sound. It was a little bit too loose, so I did have to come in here and do some manual editing. And then what I did was I switched the, um, <clears throat> I switched this uh, little prop down thing to transients over here and then tighten up the sound so it's just kind of tightening up the transients and making it a little bit more, mixing it in a little bit more so that it, like the decay isn't as long so it kind of fits into the drum loop a little. Other than that, some processing I did was remove some of the lows like usual and drop some of the highs. Uh, once some one knob side chain and some one knob saturation. And then I also have this one slightly uh, pan to the left because I have another drum sound here that we'll listen to next. And so to kind of look at the mini, this one too, I did have to come in and add some extra warp markers to kind of tighten it up a little bit. 
And then I also adjusted the transient uh, changes to this mode here and then brought it down a little bit. I also tied it up as well. In terms of any processing, just removing some of the lows, some one upside check, some one upside chain, and some one up saturation, and adding a little bit of width with the, with the wider plugin. And this one is uh, panned a little bit to the right. So other than that, there are these little fills that I added here. And a cool little roll kind of sound. I uh, just found something interesting. It's a little bit more of an arrangement trick, so I won't go too into it. But I will show you this next part over here, which is this ride sound. <laughs> so what I did is I have one ride penned to the left, and um, this is like a 909 ride half high uh, sound, and basically just a cool way that you can kind of add some energy throughout your tracks. Maybe first 16 bars there's no rides, and then the second uh, 16 bars you add in the ride. Uh, just a way to kind of build up some of the energy. But yeah, that's kind of a look at the drums, kind of getting more of that like every 16 bars changing up the sounds in the arrangement video, which should come in a couple days or a week or so. Um, but yeah, let's a look at the drums for this track. Hello again, my friend. Hopefully you found that video useful. If you'd like to follow along yourself with the five step song finishing checklist, there will be a link in the description below where you can get access to that completely for free. And it's going to help you finish your songs a lot faster and better than ever before. If you found this video useful, like and subscribe and all that good stuff. But really the best thing I can do for you is hook you up with that free checklist. So make sure you check that one. Other than that, I'll see you in the next video, my friend. Have a good one.